This is yours truly playing the Kerbal Space Program. We are going to play around with some rocket designs and show you how to get into orbit if you're curious. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a single person command pod. Typically they're lighter, easier to control, you have less redundancy of passengers in case of unfortunate space-faring accidents. But, you know, if you lose the pilot of this one, the whole craft is yours, so roll the dice. Typically, I this is the command pod mark one, and we got, what I did was I put a mark 16 parachute, a little small parachute on the tip. Typically, uh, larger vessels, you would want to be able to have a larger command pod that you could put a payload up there. Or you could have, you know, the payload pop off, you know, from docking rings and reconnect it, much like the Apollo missions did. But let's put the next piece on there. We need a small TR-18A stack decoupler. What this allows us to do is allows us to separate our rocket into stages. Next. I like to do this, it's optional, but it really helps you control the craft, at least with the default parts. You want more, you want to engage some of the mods available in the game if you really want higher end autopilot or, or, or autopilot assisted flight modes. But this will at least allow you to say, tell the, the spacecraft to stay at this position. Um, there are also, need to put some fuel. Oh, well, actually, we're going to skip the fuel for right now. I kind of want to show you what happens when we just put one of the small, solid stage boosters on here. We'll just do this. And this will be... Chuck's 01. We're going to fly this bad boy. Let's save him and launch him. This is pretty much the bare minimum that you need to just get off the ground. I like to open my resources tab. I didn't have to tweak with the staging very much, but let's check that out. The map mode real quick, zoom in really close. You can see I've got a piece of space debris from prior missions. Now let's get back onto our rocket and let's launch. And the thing about rock, solid rocket engines is that they just go. They, once you light the fire, it doesn't stop. It's like a Roman candle. You're sitting on top of it. As you can see, it's starting to overheat a little bit. This is because it's firing faster into the air than... You're basically fighting turn velocity until you get higher up into the atmosphere and there's less air. You can see the sonic boom around it. Let's separate that stage out. Ah, oh, there, we're just floating in space. We got about, uh, we're still going up, let's see, about, uh, about 14, let's see what our apoapsis is. Our apoapsis is uh, about 17 and a half meters, 17 and a half kilometers up. So we're falling, we're falling. I'm just gonna wait until we fall back down to deploy the parachute. Now, most people would say that you need to recover every single one, but I will just get it to an altitude that's safe for deploying the parachute. Let's speed up time a little bit. You can speed up time with the left and right arrows. It warns you that large ships can be unstable which is very very true but let's get back down to earth a little bit <clears throat> we can let terminal velocity kill our speed most of the way and alright we're doing about 200 meters per second this is you are about to your terminal velocity at this point even slow you down a little bit as the air gets thicker closer to the gravitational pull of the astronomical body. I'm going to blow the parachute about 2.5 kilometers. There we go. 
you'll see. And the game doesn't really punish you with parachutes and whatnot, but in real life, if you just pull your parachute at the wrong period and you're going too fast, it'll actually burn up or break free and tear your craft up. And the game does simulate it to some degree, but it's much, much more forgiving than real life is. There you go. They tend to deploy about 500 meters true altitude. And true altitude is different than... There, there's many different altitude types within with air, aerospace. Because you have altitude relative to the representational ellipsoid of the planetary body. You have the altitude relative to the gravitational field of the astronomical body, and that's your barometric pressure. And then you also have your ground level, which will, will follow you know the tops of mountains and the bottoms of oceans. And then you also have your... Uh, your nautical sea, uh, you know, your sea level, that's roughly the same as the, the gravitational pull when it's over a, a body of water. Because water will settle into its own level. Alright, well, this guy's gonna land, you're gonna see it, yada yada yada, everybody's happy. Uh, let's end the flight. End the flight. Go to the vehicle assembly building. All right. See, we were able to get this thing up in the air, but I mean, that's still not a very high range. I mean, you could shoot an amateur model rocket up into the air that fat, that high, because they're so light. And uh, probably spend a lot less money than NASA would doing this sort of experiment that they haven't done in a very, very long time. So typically with a real rocket, what you want to do is you want to have stages. You want to have uh, stages that will work in vacuum better. You want to have stages that will help you drive the lift stages to uh, get you through the atmosphere into uh, thinner air when you can actually put up a high, uh, get a high uh, velocity going. Let's, this is what we put on. We put on an FLT400 fuel tank. I'm going to put on a any type of if you're dealing with fuel or fuel tanks. Uh, this is going to be your propulsion tab. I want the LV909 liquid fuel engine. This has a uh, vector thrust, so it can steer with it. It also has a very uh, reasonable specific uh, impulse in vacuum. Your specific impulse is basically a measure of your uh, engine's efficiency, how quickly and it can burn fuel and at what you know what rate it's going to deplete the reserves. Um, going to need another decoupler. Let's get the TR18A stack decoupler. I have to say I've played a lot of the games and I have to say I really like the stock parts. I mean a lot of the mods give you unique functionality, but the stock parts are uh, really really nice. Now let's put a fairly large engine on this one, and we want to put one, there's two rocket engines, I ah, see the KW rocketry, these two, here we go, LT, LVT30 liquid fuel engine and the LT, LVT45, the LVT45 has vector thrusting but not as much as the others and but we can compensate for that by putting on decouplers to our frame radial decouplers not just vertical decouplers uh, we don't want the hydraulic attachment the TT38K radial decoupler well, you can put this on here. There's different ways of putting parts radially on the craft. Uh, right now I'm starting out in circle mode. For some reason I don't typically like it. There's angle snap, which will snap at fixed points relative to the, uh, the facing of the craft. That's one thing. But, I mean, you, I would have to put two on both sides and hope that they get lined up properly and whatnot. So let's do something differently. We're going to put on symmetry mode. 
So this is the radial symmetry mode. This will put one of these decouplers on both sides. Now the neat thing about this part and what really makes it useful when you're working with it is putting, here's an RT10 solid fuel booster. The same one that we rode up to about 17, you know, 17.5K kilometers up. So there we go. And now the neat thing about the game is that, you know, it will do your staging. Oh, I got a part, stray part, please delete it. But I want to be able to change this so that all three of these engines turn on at the same time. And I can control the liquid fuel engine. The liquid fuel engines, you actually have a throttle that you can bring up and down. And typically you would have to rely on the vector thrust to steer this. You also want to make sure that your symmetry uh, to your center of mass for your thrust. Center of mass. You always want to compare your center of mass to your center of thrust kind of get the idea of how this vehicle is being pushed up in the air and how you know if it's off center how it will tilt how you'll deal with it also right now we don't have any lift so I'm going to put on some parts that will provide us lift uh, lift is achieved by putting drag on the airframe but at the same time bring it up now there's two options here I have these aerodynamic nose cones I could put on here that look like a little stumpy thing but we could also go into structural parts here and we could find the first part of the NCS adapter, the base of C7 Aerospace's nose cone system. So that will put that on both sides. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can put this small tip on there. So you can kind of get the classic black and white paneled rocketry paint scheme going on. Oh, when here you're going to start to see the magic of our uh, the stability augmentation system. These are basically gyroscopes that you will put on your craft at various points to help stabilize it around the center of mass. And typically this will keep your nose pointing into the wind. And so you start to see that we don't really have center of lift yet. You really have to put on some wings for that. So let's put on standard tail fins right here. And then I will put on That should be enough. Well, typically though, if you want to be able to have control over at least roll and pitch and yaw of any sort, you have to have at least two axes. So we'll take a look at our center of lift, center of mass. So our center of lift is a little bit behind the center of mass, but in front of our center of thrust. So. Uh, I'd say that gives us decent enough control. And this is starting to get to be a relatively large enough design. So we will want to put on a launch platform. These are part of the standard kit. The TR TT18A Launch Stability Enhancer. Or, I like to think of them, the giant red clamps. Now, see what happens is we have these this, the launch stability enhancers are not going to fire in the same stage as our as our engine. So let's fix this. You'll see I click on it, bring it into stage five. Stage five, what we'll do? Okay, now I'll start to explain the staging. The staging can get really complicated, and this is where you'll wind up having most of your trial and error. So we're going to have all of our engines fire, we're going to release the launch clamps, and then when the solid rocket boosters run out, instead of carrying dead mass with us, the radial decouplers will fire and launch them from our craft. Now, let's see, and I'm going to start to introduce some points here that will help us in the future. You have strut connectors. And I've got some 
funky strut connectors, but here's the base ones. EAS4 strut connectors. Typically when you have a lot of mass hanging off there just from a decoupler, it's going to wobble. And it's going to wobble a lot and you don't want that to happen. And so you what you want to do is you basically tie metal reinforcement straps to everything. And typically you can do them on the top, do them on the bottom. When the decoupler fires, they'll break. But before then, they will simply help you hold your craft together. They do kind of have a drag to them a little bit. You can see a total drag, 0.02. But just don't overuse them and it won't slam the physics part engine of the simulator too badly. So let's save our Chucks O2. This is going to be our Chucks O2. Orbiter. So I think this guy, I think I can get this one into orbit. Let's try and see. I'll save it, launch it. Oh, there's already something I see we can do. We can put this, this stage right here, this extra engine that's sitting in the middle. It's not at the same stage as the decoupler, and so that's really an extra complication that you just don't need to worry about. So this will all get it together, and then we have our stage that'll separate our capsule once we're ready for re-entry, and then the parachute. So I think I should be able to get this into orbit. Save it, launch it. <clears throat> when you're playing this game, a lot 99% of your time is going to wind up being caught up either between long, long, long gravity turns between planets when you're firing, or just simply putting the thing together because design is 90% of the work. All right, let's take a look at our astronomical map. Zoom in on our craft in the launch pad. Pull up our gimbal. Gimbal is basically gravity controlled ball and tells us our craft's orientation relative to the planetary body that whose gravitational focus it has. Let's Go ahead and bring our throttle up. Now this is the thing about liquid engines. You have to bring the throttle up with shift and control up and down. So if I want my graph to, to, to launch, let's do that. So let's go ahead and fire. Blast off. Now when we get to about 280 meters per second down below, I'm going to you know, throttle, start to throttle down. So I'm going to start throttle down. In fact, I'm also going to put on my SAS module so we can lock in our heading. Oh, blow off our solid style the stages. All right, we're still liquid engine. We need to bring that up a little more now. We're starting. To, I'm starting to lose velocity, so we need to have positive acceleration enough to at least counteract the gravitational pull of the planet Kerbin. All right, now let's take a look at our map. I, I don't think we're going to run out of fuel. I wish uh, I could see my rocket stages. Oh, I guess I can't see. Well, I don't know. I can't see. Them. But you can see our apoapsis is growing, 18, 19, 20, so let's get back here. I think I'm going to be able to break orbit with this thing. Uh, orbit is typically, you know, the lowest orbit you can do is about 100 uh, kilometers out from the planet. And you want, to, you want to, to move your craft into equatorial orbit, so let's go ahead and pitch our craft over. Yeah, I want to do a 90 degree heading. Here we go. Let's lock in our SAS. We're still climbing, but I want to have a slightly improved pitch angle. So let's go ahead and roll our craft so that we're flat over the horizon. 
control up and down controls much more easily that way. Well, it's pointed at the horizon. Let's go check out our Apple Apps. Is what is it? It is uh, apparently 60. I could probably do better than that. Typically, you would want to kind of start your gravity turn uh, around the, equ the equator of the body at about 10 to 12 to 15, depending upon the size. Um, and you also have one where you can incorporate staging, like you don't want to be turning at the same time you're trying to blow off, you know, uh, uh, an asparagus stack of rocket engines. So, let me take a look at the map here. See, I'm going to do a circular orbit roughly about the same time I'm also like growing my apoapsis here. So I want to be in this um, planetary mode for our, our mission planning while we're doing this. And once I can get this apoapsis up to about 100, then I'm going to put on a uh, mission planning mode. There you can see my station 2 the planet. This is what NASA keeps talking about, space junk. It's very easy to collect in the game. Um, it's even extremely difficult to plan to rid yourself of it and be have yourself green space missions, which if you're blowing volatile and toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, that's kind of a not contradiction, but it's for the greater good of all Kerbal kind. Oh, our apoapsis is growing really nicely, so let's, uh, let's start to bring our throttle down a little bit, slow it, make it a little easier to hit that target point. When you're ready to kill the throttle completely, you can just press the X key and it will knock it down to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our apoapsis into about 100 kilometers and lock it in place and then we're going to plan our next mission note. There we go. So at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use the game's default mission planning maneuver node systems. I'm not a huge fan of them. It's much more easy to use a mech jab or the laser system for getting our craft uh, planned out. Oh, oh, I'm doing that route retrograde. Let's plan our... Let's try to plan a circular orbit so that... There we go, 107, oh, 97. See, you can see why I don't really like it. You can't even really, you can, you know, you have to kind of pull and tug, you can't just type in a number. There we go. That's a good circular orbit. We'll lock that heading in. Right click it. And then you also have the X if you want to remove it. But basically this is going this helps you uh, steer your craft manually if you're lacking some sort of an autopilot module. Which, you know, it's it's a good skill to develop to figure out how to do this. So let's, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate our craft around until we can find the pro, the blue crosshairs that the mission planning's modes put, gives us. There we go. This is missing it completely. You don't want to spin too fast out of control or you start tumbling like a bullet. Anybody that has fired a gun probably understands what I'm talking about. There we go. Kind of lock it on the, the dead center as best as you can. It's not going to be perfect, but what this does is this allows you to be have your craft oriented in the direction that you need to do your next burn, as well as it gives you kind of an estimation of how much time you're going to need for your burn. Now, we don't have a lot of fuel, but at the same time, our craft is fairly light. So, I'm going to try to just get us into an orbit without going dry and if it looks like we're going to do a dry I'm just going to pull the oh shit lever and get us down back to the planet alright estimated burn now see the next node is in 2 minutes and 10 seconds I'm going to warp time to get us there not too quickly 10x once you're at a fairly high altitude, the higher you are from an astronomical body, the, the faster a warp factor the game will allow you to have. So, 
5x to get this last bit. Do the 10 countdown. All right, 10. Start burning. You know, this also helps us navigate. So we'll get periapsis. So you would basically what you're doing is you're doing an orbital burn at your apogee and adjusting your apoapsis. So we're at 110 kilometers by 98 kilometers, and that's that's pretty stable orbit. It won't decay. Your craft will be in the air. I still have enough fuel in my tanks to be able to get to the planet, back down to the planet. We're not going to die. So, and I'm going to also feature a, an interesting bit of this game that exists. I'll do a quick EVA because even the early space missions, uh, Mercury missions, those astronauts got out and they walked around. They were men of guts and glory. So I'll show you what the EVA does. Basically it's similar to your craft control commands. So hit space R to release. I'm going to put hit L to turn my lights on and R to turn on my rockets. And this is typically the part that will kind of make you worry that you might drift too far away from your spacecraft, but it's not really a huge worry. So you can go backwards, forwards, left, right. Shifting control will make you go up and down. So I'll just get back in. We'll grab on, board, we will take this uh, tin can home. Let's get Now, what you're going to do is you're going to point the craft in an orientation that's called retrograde. You want to do retrograde to lower your periapsis or your apoapsis. You want to go prograde if you want to raise your apoapsis or periapsis, typically. Other more complicated maneuvers have different orientations and different phase angle calculations, but I'm not really a physicist, so probably not the best person to ask about that, about this. I just like to fly rockets, so I've picked the game up. Alright, so basically you can see how useful the SAS is for manual flight. Typically I'm not good enough of a pilot to do much without it, honestly, but I can get back up into orbit and down with it. I don't think I could do a manned mission to the moon. You'll see that as I'm lowering my periapsis here, my apoapsis that I'm at, which is tip, you know, right, my current ball, current altitude, if it's a circular orbit, ideally, when we start to lower our periapsis, you can start to see that in space flight, you always want to do your maneuver nose at the Apo key or paro key. Apo key and paro key. It depends on who you're asking and how, how it's said. <clears throat> now, I've got a uh, an orbital position that will land us in the ocean over here. What I'll do is the closer we get down, I'll fire the jets to get us into a more friendly orientation turn the sass on and off with the T key so we're starting to we'll time warp down a little bit more you don't want to time warp too low but it'll, it'll cut out about 65 kilometers around carbon. It varies based upon the size of a planet and I'm not certain the formulas that the game uses to determine those altitudes.
There's also interesting effects like the different moons that do not have atmospheres. You can't use parachutes and so forth, but any planets that would have atmospheres, you can use that. The planet's atmosphere and it parachutes to slow you down as well as any fuel to conserve your fuel. Uh oh. Warning, using physics warp can affect the structural stability of the vessel. Good thing we have a very, very tiny, tiny vessel. Yeah. We're at about 65 kilometers. This is pretty, pretty thin atmosphere. Jet engines won't work. Any any oxygen breathing engines were not functional. Let's bring our craft's orientation up a little bit. Our surface speed is about fairly fairly slow. don't want to go in at too high of a ballistic velocity or else the atmosphere will simply shred and burn your craft up to nothing. This game's pretty forgiving. Uh, I do have a lasers mod installed and that will make anything that's too hot just extremely I mean, immediately blow up but we have enough fuel to slow down our orbital velocity on our descent here. So I'll bring our engines up. We'll just burn until this tin can's empty. Otherwise, we are just a speedy bullet waiting to die, ticking time off. It is interesting to note, too, that your stack separation, stage separation of mass, does also follow the rocketry equation, so shooting that off will slow down your command vessel considerably let's take a look hmm I don't see it here but it's on this map Our orbiter debris We're 45 kilometers in a tin can and a parachute. Pray to God that it holds up, but terminal velocity is going to slow us down. I want to get to the level that the atmosphere is actually thick enough and has enough oxygen to start to combust. There we go. I love that little effect. It's neat. You're slowing down with Oh, there we go. There's our orbiter debris. You can see sometimes if you line up the horizon in your perspective and your field of view just properly, you can really get some good scenes in this game. Oh, Jebediah Kerman, you're a brave, brave, brave man. Crazy, insane, deranged, demented man, but you're you're brave nonetheless, and you've done your your nation state of origin a, a great service you know your military and your great leader thanks you just wait wait for the right second to pull that ripcord don't want to pull that air parachute just gonna wait till the terminal velocity of this air and the atmosphere pick kicks in seven thousand meters six and a half thousand meters Okay, 200 meters per second. Okay, terminal velocity is pretty much kicked in. About five k, five kilometers. We will, we will deploy this chute. There we go. Start slowing it down a little more. And time warp it a little bit. You don't want to time warp it into the ground, though. I, I've learned to appreciate that fact. This game is not very forgiving when you are colliding with another body of mass. Let's turn the physics engine down. There we go. Let it go up to two. Game doesn't. Uh, it kind of doesn't do well with field of view and level of detail. 
sometimes it's hard to tell how far you are you want to tilt the craft you tilt the camera below the equator of your craft it's coming down five four x hopefully we don't kill Jeb oh 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 looks like there he oh there we go there's Jeb hey Jeb let's let Jeb get out EVA real quick do 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 I'm not sure what sort of music would be playing but whatever the Kerbal National Anthem is this is the first Kerbal to achieve orbit good night